It's 3.30 a.m. on that hot August night in Los Angeles. At Dee Dee Jackson's home in the San Fernando Valley, a ringing phone wakens the sleeping household. I got a phone call. I was told that, that my mom had been in an accident and that I need to go to the hospital right away. Paramedics had rushed an unresponsive Dee Dee to the hospital after an apparent swimming accident at the home of her new boyfriend, Don Bohanna. But before the boys can reach the hospital, doctors pronounce their mother dead. When he said she's dead, I don't remember anything else he said. The next phone call is to their dad. It was just horrifying and just the coldest day of our lives. Tito Jackson was the second oldest brother of the group, the Jackson Five. Tito was most known for being the only member playing the guitar while dancing when they performed. Now, once the Jacksons made it big in the music industry, they moved from their tiny little house in Gary, Indiana to Los Angeles, California. And once in L.A., Tito began going to Fairfax High School. It was there that he would meet the love of his life, Dolores Didi Martez. Now, Didi was born Dolores Vilma Martez on April 1st, 1955 in New York City. Her mother's name was Irma Martez, and she was from Mexico. Didi's father was from the Dominican Republic. Now, when Didi was a baby, her parents split up, and she didn't see her dad too much after that. Didi was known as a happy child, full of confidence, very positive, with a happy-go-lucky spirit. So Didi, her mom, and her three sisters moved to Los Angeles in 1968. And when Didi was a teenager, her family was living in the Crenshaw District of South Los Angeles. Now there, Didi attended Fairfax High School, and it was there that she met fellow student Toriano Jackson, who went by Tito. He was the brother of Michael Jackson and also a member of the world-famous Jackson 5. Now this, as you can imagine, was very exciting to Dee Dee, but this was not the reason why she liked Tito. Of course, it was awesome that he had fans and he was talented and basically a rock star at such a young age. But for Dee Dee, none of these things mattered. It was all about Tito's personality. You see, even though Tito was famous and had played countless concerts all around the world, he was actually very quiet and reserved, very shy, around his peers. Now, Didi, on the other hand, she was very outgoing. She was fun to be around, so the pair balanced each other out in that way. So the day that Didi and Tito officially met, it was Tito's birthday. While they were in between classes, seeing Tito, Didi ran up to him and gave him a kiss on his cheek, wishing him a happy birthday. Now, being such a shy guy, Tito was fascinated by Didi's outgoing personality. She had ran up to me and said happy birthday and gave me a kiss on the cheek. So what was attractive to you about Dee Dee? Well, I was a shy young man and for her to be so outgoing and uh, I just found that fascinating. The shy young man is now an international superstar. Yet with Dee Dee, they're just typical high school kids. She didn't even care about him being a member of the Jacksons. She just cared about him. Eventually, the couple got engaged, and then shortly after graduating high school, they got married on June 16, 1972. And Dee Dee became part of the whirlwind of fame surrounding the Jacksons. She was like one of the sisters. She had a, a little apple green Vega. She used to let Michael drive it up and down the driveway. Those were good old days. Now, due to Tito's celebrity status with the Jackson 5, he and Dee Dee's wedding made national news. And as you can imagine, this was a lot of attention for Dee Dee, attention that she'd never experienced before. Now, most of this attention in the press was favorable to the young newlyweds. But as we know, the media can be cruel, and rumors started to circulate that maybe Dee Dee would be the one to break up the Jackson 5, that she would distract Tito from his brothers, and this would cause the group to disband. A lot of people were angry that Dee Dee was now a Jackson, and of course they were jealous. But Dee Dee being the confident young woman that she was, none of this bothered her at all. Every time she and Tito were interviewed, they would say that they had no plans on breaking up, 
But no matter what they said, the speculation just kept on coming. I was 18. No one uh, wanted me to be married. And at 18, when you're in love, you're in love. And no one can say no. Didi was not bothered by any of the rumors. In fact, Didi was not affected by fame much at all. She just wanted to live a normal life. Now, the idea that she was now a member of the Jackson family, the fact that the members of the family were so famous, none of this phased her at all. She did not see her in-laws as celebrities like the outside world did. She saw them as regular people, her family, people that she loved. Michael, Janet, Jermaine, LaToya, all of them had such huge celebrity attached to their names, but Dee Dee saw them as the potential aunts and uncles to her children. And eventually, Tito and Dee Dee did have children. They had three sons, Toriano Jr., who is also known as Taj, was born in 1973. Terrell was born in 1975. And Tito Joe, also known as TJ, was born in 1978. Now a quick tea break. Did you know that Kim Kardashian dated TJ Jackson when she was a young girl? That's right. Apparently the two young lovers were a thing back in the day dating from 1994 to 1996. Now the story goes that at the age of 14, Kim told her mom, Chris, about wanting to lose her virginity to then 16 year old TJ. Kim told Oprah in an interview, when I did want to have sex for the first time, I was almost 15. I was like, I think I'm going to, or I want to. And Chris was like, okay, so this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna put you on birth control. Woo child. But that's not the only Kardashian teenager that dated a 3T member. Kim's sister, Courtney, dated Terrell. In a 2016 interview with Vlad TV, Tito discussed his son's romance with Courtney, saying that Terrell dated Courtney as little as maybe seven or eight years ago. He also noted that the pair were allegedly together for a few years, and despite their breakup, their family still keep in touch and remain very close. Child Mama Chris sure did shop those Kardashian girls around, all around Hollywood. That is for sure. Now they have quite the resumes when it comes to dating and for such a young age. Now drop down in the comments and let me know, did you know about these couples? Now it doesn't look like Taj Jackson had any relationships with any of the Kardashian girls like his brothers, but there is some rather disturbing details from his childhood. Now, according to the Daily Mail, Taj Jackson was sexually abused by a family member as a child. Now, according to tweets from Taj, the guilty party was an unnamed relative from his mother Dee Dee's side of the family. It was reportedly his uncle Michael Jackson who helped Taj cope with and survive this ordeal acting as a support system for Taj and his mother, Dee Dee. Now, Taj revealed this dark secret in order to defend his uncle Michael against choreographer Wade Robeson's 2013 lawsuit, which claimed that Michael molested him repeatedly between the ages of 7 to 14. Now, this is very sad to hear, but given the fact that Dee Dee was taken from the boys during their teenage years, and this abuse occurred when Taj was younger, I'm wondering if Dee Dee even knew that it was a possible relative of hers that molested her child. Drop down in the comments and let me know what you think. Now, Dee Dee loved being a mother to her boys. She nurtured each of them as they came along and was a very hands-on caring mother, just as her own mother had been to her. And Dee Dee's mother was also very close to the boys. She spent a lot of time with them during holidays, on their birthdays, making sure that she was always around to enjoy her grandchildren. Now that Dee Dee was a mother of three boys, she loved it and enjoyed being at home with them. Now, if she was not interested in Tito's fame or the Jackson 5's fame before, she definitely was not interested now. Being a mother was her only focus. She just really wanted to raise her kids and give them the most normal life that she possibly could. She put a lot of effort into raising them and she was very proud of them. She stayed home with them when Tito went on tour, 
sometimes for months at a time. And she was basically a single parent to the boys because Tito was constantly away touring and doing shows with the Jackson Five. Now, the boys, when speaking about their mother, have said that she was a very kind and nurturing mother, but she was also tough when she had to be. She never missed a little league game. She was always on the sidelines cheering them on, and she basically just wanted their lives to be as normal as possible, despite the fact that they came from such a famous family. She was a lot to them. She worked so hard, and uh, I always called her the number one mom because uh, she worked uh, in the PTA meetings, uh, Little League fields, the uh, school boards, charities, she did it all. And, uh, and her kiss was her life. She always stressed, you know, to stick together and you're going to need your brothers and don't knock them down because there'll be plenty of other people that will do that. Yeah, that's sweet. They would go on tour. So a lot of the times it was us three and mom at home. She's very tough and, and um, but at the same time loving. She's really passionate about being a mother. For Dee Dee, school and Little League Baseball, the local Encino ball field is named in her honor, are far more important than the red carpet and fame and fortune. I think my mom knew that it was not going to be a quote unquote normal life, so she made it as normal as possible. Now, unfortunately, Dee Dee and Tito's marriage did not last, with the two separating and then divorcing in 1988. There wasn't a lot of fighting. They actually had a very civil separation and just wanted to continue on co-parenting as best they could and support each other as friends. Tito and Dee Dee's marriage is on the rocks. It wasn't an, a, a bad divorce where no. you guys didn't like each other. Right? No, it wasn't. It's was just differences. Now, now a quick tea break. When speaking on his divorce from Dee Dee, Tito has said that when the two grew apart, they divorced. It was simple. There was no animosity. However, there's always been speculations for the reason for the divorce. And that could be that Tito was cheating on Dee Dee, that he had always been a cheater, living the life of a rock star. And when going on tour, he was having relationships with other women. Now, I can believe that given the fact that he was part of the Jackson 5. Now, back when the Jacksons had a show on Lifetime called The Jacksons, The Next Generation, the three T's really wanted to get to the bottom of a rumor that a woman by the name of Tanae Jackson was spreading. Tanae had been claiming for several years on blogs and in interviews that she was the illegitimate daughter of Tito Jackson. So after getting tired of hearing her make those claims to the press, Tito's sons decided to confront her on national TV. Now, after Tanae claimed that she had a DNA test taken with their dad some years ago, that she said confirmed that she was the daughter, but that she could not produce the results of this test to them, the sons got even more suspicious of her claims and convinced her to take a DNA test with them. Now, on their way to the DNA testing site, they ran into their uncle Jermaine Jackson on the street and informed him of who she was, and Jermaine stated that she doesn't look anything like us at all and that he had never heard of her before. Now, that didn't stop Tanae from going through with the DNA test, though. Now, when they got into the testing site, they really knew that something was up when Tanae pulled them to the side and whispered into their ears without even realizing that the boom mics still could pick up her sound. She asked them if they would agree to not reveal the results to the public. Now, of course, the three T's disagreed with this, but Tanae still went through with the test. Now, Tito had told his sons years ago that this woman was lying and that they took a DNA test before and it had come back negative. He said he had asked her to stop lying to the public because it made him look like he had a daughter out there that he didn't take care of. But yet she kept on going to the media with her story. So when the DNA test episode aired, the three T's got the DNA test results back, confirming that Tito was not Tanae's father. They told their dad that they had went behind his back to one once and for all, put these lies to rest. Now, Tito didn't necessarily like that they did that, but collectively, they all breathed a sigh of relief that these illegitimate daughter stories could now be laid to rest for all of the world to see. So after all of that was confirmed, Tanae released several photos with her and Tito taking selfies together and one with her and Joe Jackson as well. Now, no one knows what the connection is that they have with Tanae, if any at all, but it looks like they were comfortable in each other's presence as if they do at least know each other. Now, y'all let me know what you think about this tea. 
These pictures show for sure that she definitely knows the Jacksons. Now, their sons being from such a musically talented family, they seem to inherit that gift. And in 1989, they formed an R&B pop group of their own called 3T. Now, with her boys off enjoying a career of their own, selling a million copies of their album, and now separated from Tito, 39-year-old Dee Dee, a single divorcee, was ready to begin dating. So in the spring of 1994, our friend introduced her to L.A. businessman Don Bohanna, who was 59 years old, which was 20 years older than Dee Dee. Don had become wealthy in L.A. by running hospitals and insurance companies. He lived the high life, owning several luxury cars, a jet, a boat, and was always in the mix of things, hanging around the Hollywood elite and various celebrities. So in 1992, Don opened up the first sit-down restaurant in Watts, California, since the 1965 riots, naming this restaurant Denny's in the Hood, serving soul food. He employed the people of the community, which made Don a local hero. Putting people to work within their community, and that's the change. That's the making a statement. Dee Dee and Don, now an official couple, they spent a lot of time together and seemed to be taking their relationship to the next level. Now, according to Don's daughter, Donna Bohena, Dee Dee and her dad were the perfect couple. Donna liked Dee Dee very much, so much so that she had asked Dee Dee to even help plan her oh, wow. wedding. She became very animated about it and supportive, and I thought, wow, my, my dad's new girlfriend is really cool. These sons, the three T's, they were not as accepting of Don, feeling that there was something off about him. Whenever Don came around, there seemed to be a coldness about him, and he never really spoke to the boys or tried to have a relationship with them. Very cold, um, didn't speak, and I didn't really care for him. But nevertheless, Dee Dee and Don were forging full force ahead with their relationship. Now, on the evening of August 27th, 1994, this night started off just like any other weekend night for Dee Dee and Don. The couple had enjoyed a late night dinner, finishing that up around 11 p.m., and then decided to kick back with some drinks around the pool. Don enjoying a glass of wine and Dee Dee a rum and coke. Now, as the evening went on and the drinks continued to flow, Dee Dee and Don took a phone call from Don's daughter, Donna, about the wedding. Now, after the phone call, the couple decided to get into the hot tub to relax and continue enjoying their drinks. After they spent some time in the hot tub, according to Don, Dee Dee swam back and forth in the pool. He then noticed that she appeared to be in trouble in the 15-foot deep end of the pool. Don says that after a series of desperate attempts to get her out of the pool, he then jumped into the pool where he put his arms around her, flipping her out of the pool. Pretty hot, unusually hot in, uh, in LA. The moon was out, we'd go out and sit the pool, have a couple of drinks, large, we sometimes have a cigarette. It's very, you know, romantic. We ended up going into the jacuzzi, and she swam over to the light. Then I noticed she was moving. I jumped in, put my arms around her, and then took her out of the pool. At that time, then I started doing CPR on her. You know, I, I couldn't believe it. I just went numb. At about 3.30 a.m., Don called 911, saying that someone fell into the pool and was drowning. What's the problem, sir? Someone fell in my pool. He's drowning. Six foot holes. Who's drowning? Come on, six foot holes. Hang on, hang on. The paramedics rushed to the scene where they found Dee Dee by the pool unresponsive. Now, both Dee Dee and Don were naked, and Don was extremely intoxicated. It was by the bushes that the body of Dee Dee Jackson was found. When unraveling what happened on that fateful night, Detective Bob Snapper of the LA County Sheriff's Office was interviewed by 2020 about the investigation and his findings. He said the pool was approximately 15 feet deep and around the pool there was evidence that there had been heavy drinking going on. Detective Snapper said that he found a 1.75 liter bottle of rum that was empty 
also two quarts of wine, and both of those were empty. He said that Don was so drunk, he could still smell the alcohol on his breath. Don had actually blurted out the wrong address when making the 911 call. And even after hours had passed by, since the paramedics arrived to the scene, Don was still very drunk. Now, Detective Snapper did a test on Don to see just how drunk he was, and Don pretty much failed the test. Now, despite Don's apparent drunken condition, Detective Snapper asked him to give a detailed account on just how Dee Dee had drowned in his pool. Now, Don tells the detective that Dee Dee had come over, swimming to him, and she then touched the pool light. She then did an Olympic-style turn to go back to where the spa was. Don said he then got out of the pool, and then that's when he noticed that she was down in the deep end of the pool and it seemed that she was in trouble. He jumped into the pool, and Don said that is when Dee Dee fought him off. He got out of the pool again and used the pool pole and extended that out out to Dee Dee in the water so that she can grab onto it but she did not Don then goes in and lifts Dee Dee from up under her arms and gets her out of the pool from the deep end but sadly it's too late now when relating the events of the evening the detective said that Don's behavior was not suspicious to him in any way even though he showed no emotion at all and seemed to be matter of fact he said nothing stood out to him that said that Don had possibly done something to Dee Dee 7th 1994 an autopsy found that Dee Dee's blood alcohol level was 0.22 which is actually three times the legal limit for driving now after investigating this incident the police and district attorney concluded that it was an accidental drowning now at the time of Dee Dee's death we know that Don Bohena he was a 59 year old single divorcee but this man had no criminal record he was honorably discharged from the army he had been a teacher and then an administrator of hospitals life insurance companies and banks he was friends with everyone in hollywood politicians celebrities including pat brown and lawyer johnny cochran so it did not come as a surprise to anyone that having the connections that he did no one would think that don could have possibly done something to cause Dee Dee's death but the jackson family they were not buying it, and they wanted Don Bohena to be charged with murder. They did not believe that Dee Dee drowned by accident, and they pressured the DA to charge Don with murder. Do you have any response to the civil suit? The Jacksons are filing against you? How did Dee Dee get all those bruises? 58 bruises? Tito Jackson was saying that Dee Dee could not swim. What was she doing in water to even have drowned in the first place? What is she doing in water? Dee Dee and I, neither one of us swam. So why was she in the water at all? Because she was terrified of water. The fact that there was a swimming accident, red flags for, for the family. And what about those cuts and bruises the coroner found? The LA County Coroner's Report finds 58 separate injuries that are more consistent with a struggle than with a drowning. It points to a murder to me in the first degree. But Don said that he had been teaching Dee Dee to swim and that in fact, she kept several swimsuits at his home. He said, I'll go to my grave saying that she could swim because Dolores could swim. And there were other family and friends that claimed that Dee Dee could not swim and was scared of the water. I know it was an accident, I was there. I know what happened that night. Later, Bohanna will go on the TV show Inside Edition to defend himself. If Dee Dee couldn't swim, he asked, why did she keep several swimsuits at his house? People say, well, she couldn't swim. Well, she was very comfortable swimming in this particular pool. Now, Dee Dee's son Taj told police that his mother had told him that she was trying to learn to swim and Mr. Bohanna was teaching her. And there may be some evidence to back up Bohanna's claim. According to the police report, Taj Jackson said his mother told him she was trying to learn to swim and Mr. Bohanna was teaching her. In response to those seemingly incriminating marks on Dee Dee's body, Bohanna insists that he made desperate, drunken attempts to rescue her with a pool pole. The facts are that someone was not beaten up. I think we know the answer to why she would have some bruises on her body by using a skimmer. So those questions don't even bother me. Suspicion reigns thick, but authorities take no action against Bohanna. The mode of death is undetermined. We are unclear as to how she came to meet her death. Most district attorneys won't file a case with an undetermined uh, cause of death. Now, even so, the Jackson family, they still hired attorney Brian Oxman, who was actually later disbarred for lying, dishonesty, and fraud. But nevertheless, he filed a civil wrongful death suit against Don and pressured the DA to charge Don with murder. Oxman claimed that Don had a history of domestic violence, 
He was in financial trouble, and when Didi refused to help him financially, he became so enraged that it led to murder. So the Jackson's attorney, Brian Oxman, became the family's mouthpiece, spreading the message in the media that it was their belief that Don Bohena was guilty of killing Dee Dee. Oxman tells 2020 in an interview that Dee Dee struggled with Don in the last moments of her life, fighting to pull away Don's hand as he covered her mouth. Now, Mr. Oxman also accused the DA of dragging his feet with the case, as well as trying to sweep it under the rug. On behalf of the Jackson family, Oxman filed a wrongful death suit against Don Bohena. He then went on TV giving a possible motive, which was outlined in the suit, claiming that Don Bohena was bankrupt, deeply in debt, and had turned to Dee Dee for help. Now, Brian's argument was that meeting a Jackson, Don felt that his possibilities of recovering from his financial problems had arrived. Oxman's theory was that Dee Dee was furious that Don had asked her to bail him out of his problems, and a fight soon followed. Oxman said he believed that Dee Dee laid into Don, telling him exactly what she thought and that that infuriated Don, leading him to kill Dee Dee out of anger and passion. She was a Jackson, and that's what he knew. So the Jacksons had money. That's what she knew. And beyond money problems, Oxman further conveys to the media about skeletons in Don's closet, telling hard copy that police responded at least a dozen times to 911 calls from past girlfriends. There are literally incident upon incident upon incident of the police being called to his house where he has had fights with various and sundry people, his girlfriend. Partly new revelation in the mysterious death of Michael Jackson's sister-in-law, Dee Dee Jackson. Hard copy has learned that Dee Dee's boyfriend, Don Bohanna, was present during another drowning that ended in the deaths of two women. Jody Baskerville has the exclusive. Dee Dee Jackson. Mystery has surrounded her tragic death since she was found floating face down in her boyfriend's backyard swimming pool. A final verdict has not been reached on just how Dee Dee Jackson died. Her boyfriend, Don Bohanna, has been under a cloud of suspicion ever since. Now adding to the controversy, a shocking new development from Don Bohanna's past. Hard copy now knows Bohanna was present during the accidental drowning of two women in Marina Del Rey, California. Don Bohanna wouldn't discuss the incident with us, but according to his attorney, Bohanna's boat capsized in shallow water during a party. Like Dee Dee Jackson, the two women who drowned couldn't swim. The double drowning in Marina Del Rey was officially ruled accidental. But the case involving Dee Dee Jackson hasn't been closed just yet. In this 911 call, Don Bohanna said Dee Dee fell into the pool. He later changed his story. He told investigators she jumped in for a swim after the couple had a few drinks in the jacuzzi. Well, I don't think it was intentional his different stories, if you want to call it that. But, you know, when he did, like I said, they did have a few drinks. It was just nervousness. He didn't know what to do. Donna Bohanna was a friend of Dee Dee Jackson's. She also happens to be Don Bohanna's daughter. Dee Dee was helping her plan her wedding. Ironically, Donna was married on the day Dee Dee was buried. Now in this exclusive interview, Donna Bohanna comes forward to tell what happened the night Dee Dee died. He just said they were swimming. They had been in the jacuzzi and, and swimming and back in the jacuzzi, having a few drinks. He had gotten out of the pool, and he noticed that she wasn't swimming. He immediately jumped in uh, with all his might, threw her out of the pool, and started giving her mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. But sources close to the Jackson family have said that Dee Dee was only just learning to swim. In fact, her fear of the water was well documented throughout her marriage to Tito Jackson. Did you ever see her swim no, in the pool? No, no, because I was never over there when they were, you know, together a lot. But I mean, I did see her laying out by the pool, and I have seen her bathing suits there. Donna Bohanna says the last time she spoke with Dee Dee was just three hours before her death. I had talked to them about one in the morning, and her last words were, "I'll see you Sunday." Now, the police found no evidence of Don having any history of domestic violence, that he was in any financial trouble, or that he had ever asked Dee Dee for money.
The lack of evidence, however, did not deter the Jacksons or their attorney. They still continue to pressure the DA's office to change the finding in the case. Now, after several other prosecutors had passed on the case in 1996, Lori Ann Jones, who was a new prosecutor in the L.A. District Attorney's office, sent experts to reinvestigate the 1994 accidental drowning of Dee Dee Jackson. The experts actually doubted Don's account, and Lori Jones said, when we got all of those additional reports, we took it back to the L.A. County coroner, and he changed his opinion. So then in September of 1996, two years after Dee Dee's death, Dr. David Posey changed his opinion about how Dee Dee died from undetermined to homicide assisted drowning. In March of 1997, the DA charged Don Bohena with second degree murder. Don then hired high profile attorney Harlan Braun and renowned pathologist Dr. Michael Baden as a forensic expert. It was clear to me that this was a typical innocent accidental drowning in which two people were drinking a lot and one of them drowned, Baden later told 2020. There's no evidence of homicide. But then in October of 1997, during a polygraph test, Don said that Dee Dee drowned by accident and he actually scored a 99.99 no deception indicated score. In June of 1998, Don Bohanna's three-week trial began. His lawyer did not call a single expert witness, later telling 2020 that Dr. Baden would have been a weak witness, which seems to be an odd assumption, given the fact that Dr. Baden had decades of experience as a New York medical examiner. Now, Dr. Baden was also the chief forensic pathologist chosen by Congress to investigate the assassinations of John F. Kennedy, Martin Luther King, and the death of Medgar Edwards. So saying that he would have been a weak witness is an understatement. Now, the jury convicted Don Bohena of second-degree murder and sentenced him to 15 years to life. Good morning, Your Honor. My name is Donna Bohena, and uh, I guess you could say um, I'm his favorite daughter. My father could not, did not, and would not ever, ever do what he's accused of or convicted of. Murder? That word isn't even in our vocabulary. He drank excessively at times. This has been his downfall, I see. Because because he tried to save a woman while heavily intoxicated, he's now accused of beating her up and murdering someone. Please don't take away my best friend. Despite the heartfelt pleas of his daughter and a succession of Los Angeles community leaders, 61-year-old Donald Bohana, a prominent, well-to-do businessman, was given the maximum sentence last November for the murder of Dolores Jackson, the former sister-in-law of Michael and ex-wife of Tito Jackson. It is the judgment of this court. Probation is denied. The defendant is sentenced to the state prison for the term mandated by law of 15 years to life. In an exclusive interview with Inside Edition in January of 98, Bohana recounted his version of what happened that night. She was at the deep end, and it's... And next thing I know, she was just going sort of like that. And that's when I realized she was in trouble. Dived in the pool, uh, missed her, and then tried it again and missed her again. And I ran down and got a, my pole and tried to get her out. Jury, hearing that same explanation when Bohana took the witness stand, was bothered by his answers to those questions. We, the jury, in the above entitled action, find the defendant, Donald James Bohana, guilty of... <laughs> Everything was uh, overwhelming uh, from the beginning, even from the 911 call to the last thing. Uh, uh, everything went one way. We would see it as one way that uh, uh, a murder act had, was committed. And Judge Jones agreed. The real drawback in the case was Mr. Bohanna was not very generous with, with the truth. That is the most damaging part in this case. The possibility of Donald Bohana spending the rest of his life in prison offered some consolation. It didn't bring my mom back, but I felt that's the best that could happen right now. And she'll always be in my heart. Now, more than 20 years later, Don is still furious at his attorney, Braun, saying that he just screwed him all the way. Now, given the fact that he did not call that expert witness, 
I would have to agree with Don on that one. Now, in a move that raised serious questions about Braun's defense of Bohanna, the Jackson family retained him as an attorney after Don's trial. Now, the state bar is now investigating that move and investigating Braun's conduct during the trial. So since Don Bohanna has been in prison, he has been denied parole four times. Now, this is because he maintains his innocence and he will not admit to doing a crime. The DA's office, their conviction review unit, first said that the DA would not oppose his release, but they did so anyway at his most recent March 28th, 2019 hearing. Now, as the result of his daughter Donna's efforts, 2020 profiled Don Bohanna's case on September 17th of 2017, casting substantial doubt on his conviction and a website, donaldjbohanna.com, was dedicated to his release. But even so, the newest district attorney appears to still support Don's conviction and refuses to even review his case through the Conviction Integrity Unit. And at the age of 82, Don Bohanna is still in prison, having suffered a recent stroke and battle against C-19. In July of 2022, Don Bohena was denied parole again for the sixth time. Now, since her father's conviction, Donna Bohena has been working tirelessly to prove her father's innocence and set him free. Now, Don's conviction heavily relied on the fact that Dr. David Posey changed his original ruling of Dee Dee's death from undetermined to homicide. So quite naturally, to undermine the validity of her father's conviction, Donna would have to go after Dr. Posey and cast doubt on his credibility. Now, she seems to have attempted to do just that. It was discovered that Dr. David and Posey was unqualified as a coroner. And even though he was unqualified as a coroner, the deputy district attorney at that time, Patricia Titus, selected him anyway and paid him $3,300 for his expert testimony in Dee Dee's case. It was also found that Dr. Posey's resume cited on the job training at the Armed Forces Institute of Pathology. But according to Donna Bohanna's correspondence with that institute and the institute's website, it does not teach about forensic pathology or investigations of unnatural death. The institute only provides training that amounts to second opinion diagnostic consultations on pathologic specimens, such as biopsies from military veterans and civilian doctors, including dental and veterinary sources. Now, the AF Institute of Pathology does not perform autopsies, let alone autopsies related to determining a cause of death in a possible murder investigation. So thus, it cannot provide hands-on autopsy training to a resident or a trainee, they said. Now, it was also discovered that there could have been falsification of Dr. Posey's credentials. He claimed in his resume that he received formal training at the Maryland Medical Examiner's Office. When they queried this office about training opportunities, the Maryland Medical Examiner's Office replied, we don't have on-the-job forensic training. The only training that we provide is a fellowship for medical doctors who have completed their residency in pathology and are working toward becoming a board-certified medical examiner. Now, based on his resume, Posey did not enter or complete a qualified pathology residency program, and he was not studying, nor had he studied to become a board-certified medical examiner anywhere. Now, they also discovered that Dr. Posey could have given a phony coroner's license. Now, a certificate that he had from the American Board of Pathology was issued in Louisiana. The actual American Board of Pathology, however, is headquartered in the state of Florida. And according to the board, it has never been based in Louisiana. It was founded in 1936 in Chicago, Illinois, and is now based in the city of of Tampa, Florida. The pathology board that Posey received his board certification from appears to be a diploma mill, which fraudulently qualified him to earn employment 
at the LA County Medical Examiner's Office, which is one of the largest medical examiner offices in the world. So he was working there with a diploma milled license. Now, Posey may have perjured himself on the witness stand, they said. Now, during the trial, prosecutor Patricia Titus asked Posey, how many autopsies had you performed up to August 27th of 1994? To which Posey replied, oh, it was probably somewhere in the neighborhood of around 900. Now, according to departmental records, Dr. Posey worked for the L.A. County Department of the Medical Examiner slash Coroner from July 29th of 1994 to January 31st of 1995. In total, during that time, he worked only 29 days. He was hired to work only on Saturday and Sunday nights. He resigned on January 31st of 1995. Therefore, when Judge Morris Jones appeared to believe that Posey was a current member of the L.A. Coroner's Office staff in 97 to 98, during this pretrial phase and the trial of Donald Bohena, the judge was actually being misled, Donna and her colleagues are saying. They are saying that he was actually a civilian. He was a private citizen at that time. So they are saying since he was a private citizen at that time, why was he allowed to alter the conclusion of an L.A. County medical examiner slash coroner's office autopsy without the legal qualification and basis to do so so that is a lot of information and a lot to digest but you guys let me know what you think in the comment section of this video do you think that dd Dee Dee jackson was actually murdered by don bohena or was it an accidental drowning do you believe that dr posey was not even qualified he was a private citizen at the time that he changed the ruling of Dee Dee's death from accidental to actually homicide, from undetermined to homicide. You guys let me know what you think about this in the comment section below. Well, that concludes this video, you guys. As always, like the video, share the video, but most importantly, be sure to subscribe to the channel and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye, guys.